This is Lee Bofkin at work. Based in London, he's always on the go in search of new works of graffiti. London's East End in particular is a treasure trove that draws fans from all over the world, even in bad weather. There's a few legal spaces uh, like Stockwell, um, a Trellick Tower in West London, where the quality of the graffiti, it's, it's more traditional kind of graffiti, it's mind-blowing. And you have amazing international writers, artists, come from all over the world uh, to paint in London because we do have like a long and proud history of uh, graffiti culture. Bofkin is a true collector and knows where to find all the best graffiti. Hidden away on the edge of this industrial site east of London, there's what's called the Essex Wall, a kilometer and a half long wall covered in graffiti by international artists. The Essex Wall is one of the biggest walls I know in the UK. It's the biggest wall I know in the UK. Yeah, and it's just like no one comes down here. That's what's brilliant. It's really quite isolated. It's a very quiet, still space. Um, but the art's awesome. The isolation makes the area perfect for street art. The artists take photographs and they'll share them and put them online. And there's a community around not just painting the piece, but the fact that you know, this is a pretty hidden area, but you can paint in the armpit of the world and the next day it will be all over on the internet. Lee Bofkin sees his photo archive as a way of bringing artists and street art fans together. Before he founded Global Street Art in 2012, he obtained a PhD in mathematics and was also a professional breakdancer. In 2006, an injury ended his breakdancing career. After that, he worked as a management consultant for a few years, and he often took pictures of graffiti on his travels. And then what are you going to do with it? You have 50,000 photos, and you're like, well, I should probably, you know, I, I'm so, because I was a scientist before, I've got the natural urge to classify things. So um, my PhD is in maths and evolution, and a big part of that's taxonomy. So I applied that construct onto how I see graffiti. The Global Street Art online archive now contains about 70,000 photos from 25 different countries. They're classified according to a variety of criteria, including artist, technique, location, content, and more. So I have 2,000 stencils from around the world, and you could look at sort of stencils in Buenos Aires, because Argentina has a really good stencil scene. It comes out of their political history that people used to protest with stencils. In the U.S. city of Philadelphia, Bofkin discovered an unusual form of street art and painted stickers attached to mailboxes. Recently, he also began advising London graffiti artists about which legal surfaces to spray on. He collects money for paint and looks for suitable walls on residential and commercial buildings. He also advised these two street artists from Manchester and Norway. I started getting my friends permission letters to paint just for fun, just to you know, work closer with artists, uh, and it just snowballed. So far, Bofkin has arranged for 70 legal works by 50 different international street artists, and the idea is catching on. More and more property owners are willing to pay for street art. It's just a good campaign. People love it. People come here, take pictures, publicity, and art. An art that has meanwhile become a genre in its own right. This kind of art makes people feel that the space is loved, people care for it, that there's a, a community, people are expressing themselves, lots of good things. Um, so it's reflected on the city's skin. Next up, Lee Bofkin plans to enlist his online fans to help publish a book of street art in a bid to preserve it for future generations.